Until recently, I was doing zone two cardio to improve my health. Here's why I stopped. Soon to be, Dr. Milo Wolf here with Wolf Coaching. Today, we're talking about cardio and why doing additional cardio on top of your lifting and doing a, having a generally physically active lifestyle may not be improving your health. A recent paper on the effects of leisure time physical activity on health, specifically all cause mortality risk over 30 years, really changed my opinion on this. Now, before we get into it, there is a separate discussion to be had about how much cardio interferes with muscle growth and strength adaptations when you're both doing cardio and also lifting for hypertrophy or for strength. If you want to see a video on that, leave a comment down below and I'll try and get to it soon. Previously, I thought that including some cardio, like cycling or running, on top of lifting and having a generally physically active lifestyle would actually improve health. And so for coaching and in my own practice, I actually incorporated some cycling. However, this paper changed my mind. What they did was they looked at a few databases and compiled records of 120,000 individuals over a maximum follow-up period of 30 years, screening them for how their health was and also how much activity they did in their spare time. So how active were they outside of their work in terms of moderate or vigorous activity. Importantly, moderate activity referred to things like walking, gardening even sometimes, lifting weights was included, although I'd argue it's kind of on the cusp of being vigorous as well. And it was based on metabolic equivalence, which is a measure of how much energy do you burn per hour, right? On the other hand, vigorous activity was classified as things like cycling at a decent pace, jogging, and things like those. So actually, moderate activity included a lot of things that you do in your everyday life, like walking to the store, walking with your dog, what have you, and also lifting, whereas vigorous activity mostly contained things that are actually considered formal cardio by most of us. The first big finding was that, to the surprise of basically no one, but it's cool to know, exercising is good for your health, right? So what they saw is that generally, the more physical activity you performed, the lower your risk of dying, essentially over the next 30 years. The important thing here is that how much exercise you did very much played a role. And you know, the first hour or two of exercise you do in a given week likely don't have the same benefits as say an extra one or two hours. So the relationship between how much activity you do across a week and how much of a health benefit you get isn't linear. It's not the more you do, the more gain you see linearly. It's actually a heavily diminishing returns slope. What you see is that the first about 150 to 300 minutes or about two and a half to five hours of vigorous activity and the first 300 to 600 minutes of moderate activity, so about five to 10 hours across a week, that's where you see by far the biggest returns on your health improvements. So what you see generally is that going from no activity at all, so just being completely sedentary, no lifting, no real walking across the week either to say doing about two and a half to five hours of vigorous activity, like running or cycling, or five to 10 hours of moderate activity, like walking across the week and also lifting weights, improved your health pretty drastically. So if your given risk of dying across the next 30 years was one, it would result in about a 45% reduction in likelihood of dying over the next 30 years. However, going beyond this, so beyond about two and a half to five hours of vigorous activity or about five to 10 hours of moderate activity didn't result in many additional improvements. You did still see some very marginal improvements, but we're talking very marginal. So for example, doubling your moderate activity from about five to 10 hours to 10 to 20 hours may result in as little as an extra 5% reduction in likelihood of dying over the next 30 years. So we're talking very small effects. It is a very heavily diminishing return situation wherein the first few hours that you spend in your week exercising vigorously or moderately will give you the best benefits in terms of your health. Importantly, combinations are fine. You don't need to do all of your exercise as vigorous, so you don't need to only run or cycle or do vigorous stuff, and you don't need to only do moderate stuff like lifting or walking. You can do a combination and you get the same benefits. Importantly, there is no meaningful additional benefit if you're already doing sufficient moderate activity of adding in vigorous cardio. In other words, if you're a recreational lifter or even a competitive lifter, like a bodybuilder or a powerlifter, who's getting a good amount of steps in, say six to 10,000 steps per day, and you're lifting a few times a week, there's a good chance that actually taking a step back, just looking at overall data, adding in cardio probably won't benefit your health, or at least not to a meaningful extent. So your average lifter who goes to the gym two to three times a week, 
and does maybe six to eight thousand steps a day. So he's health conscious, but he's not going out of his way. You know, he's a competitive bodybuilder. He's not super health conscious. He has a normal job, he has a family, etc. But he's making an effort. In all likelihood, based on the activity he's doing, he's nearly optimizing his health. Practical takeaway here for lifters who lift more than a few times a week and who do a good amount of steps is that formal cardio, like adding in cycling or Stairmaster or elliptical or running, likely isn't gonna benefit your health. The interesting question for me is why this is. As I said, until recently, I didn't think this was the case. Here's my two thoughts. The first thought I had was that generally what you see as you age is that you kind of wanna have the best starting place, right? So as you age, you see a decline in how strong you are, how powerful you are, your cardio, and a lot of other things that will eventually lead to complications in your health and could potentially cause you to fall, for example, break your hip, and that can lead to inactivity, and then eventually you pass away. Having a higher baseline before that decline kind of starts, I thought was a good reason as to why doing more and getting fitter, stronger, bigger, etc., was going to be beneficial. However, here's what I hadn't considered. This consideration actually sprung from a conversation I had with Greg Knuckles from Strong by Science. Follow him, great guy. The adaptations you get from a lot of lifting, like doing, say, more lifting than once or twice a week, or the adaptations you get from doing cycling or running, etc., likely don't actually directly contribute to how likely you are to survive. In everyday life, you don't need the capabilities to be able to run 10 kilometers in 40 minutes or what have you. You just don't. You need some baseline adaptations. You know, you need some amount of strength to be able to sit up from a chair or to walk around in your old age. But the adaptations required to do that really aren't that hard to get. And so doing that additional cardio past about say, five to 10 hours a week of moderate activity or two and a half to five hours a week of vigorous activity, you just don't really see any additional benefits because you've already got the adaptations. You're already stimulating the adaptations in cardiovascular ability, muscle mass, etc., that you need to survive and age gracefully. That's how I see it now. I think it makes sense based on the data. And that's how I would view additional cardio on top of just doing a good amount of steps, lifting weights somewhat. I think that's fine. To summarize and some practical takeaways for health, if you're lifting two to three times a week, 45 to 90 minutes each time, and you're doing say between six and 8,000 steps a day, you're getting most of the benefit on health that you could get from activity. If you really wanted to optimize things, I would take that to lifting at least three times a week for about 60 to 90 minutes and doing maybe at least 10,000 steps a day. I think if you're doing that, in all likelihood, you are optimizing your health as a lifter and you don't need additional cardio. And it's likely that additional cardio won't actually benefit your health. And there's a chance that doing additional cardio can actually interfere with how much muscle mass you gain or how much strength you gain, which could be something that you're interested in as a viewer of Wolf Coaching. You feel me? So if you wanna see a video on that, leave a comment down below. Anyways, that's the video. If you wanna see more videos, leave a like, comment, subscribe, donate to me on PayPal, send me free clothing, pay my food bills and do more like that. And if you do that, I'll be pretty happy. At any rate, I will see you in that next video. Peace.